Now, you've been working on a project called Make a Scene. Can you describe a little bit what this is and how it works? Sure. So the idea is what we do, we want to do is text to image generation. And we have been, uh, we've been seeing a lot of new methods and really amazing results with text to image generation. Uh, a lot of new developments in the past year. And the idea in Make a Scene is that we want to add some kind of control. So if you look at all these text to image generation models, there's kind of somewhat loose control uh, when you can only control the image with the text. So we add an additional layer of control. You can think about it as semantic control, where we also accept a simple sketch, a layout, which is kind of the composition or the scene of how the image should look. So the system takes a sketch, like, you know, say like you know, a flower in this side of the image, and then some words, you know, like yellow flower on green plant, and then from those two things generates a lifelike image. Is that basically right? Yeah, exactly. So you got your text input and you got an, another optional sketch input where you could have it like very simple sketch or it can be something very uh, complex. So very exact. And they both will work and they will generate a very nice image. It could be a painting, photorealistic, uh, whatever you describe. Now, you mentioned, so, I mean, OpenAI, Google, and us have, have developed systems to, to generate very lifelike images, you know, uh, from, from these text models and, and possibly images systems. Why is this working now versus two years ago, three years ago? It seems like this is all of a sudden sort of exploded onto the scene. What's the technological breakthrough that's enabled this to happen? Yeah, so I think there are kind of a, a few things that kind of to converge together. So when we think of text to image generation, we actually need three things. We need language understanding, we need image generation capabilities, and we need some way to kind of connect the two. So we've seen language models become very, very good, uh, even very big. And we've seen how image generation models also become better. And there are new models that emerge that kind of connect the two. And that's one aspect mm -hmm. of it. Another aspect is these are very big models and you need a lot of data to train it. And you also need a lot of compute to train it. So you, you need large scale training to be very efficient, but you also need very large data sets. Now it's not enough to have just a lot of text or a lot of images. You need to have text image pairs. So you need like millions, tens, a hundred millions uh, examples of text and image pairs because you want to learn the relationship between the two. And everything kind of converged together this year and you, we see all these uh, new mm -hmm. developments. So what are the data sets used to, to get the text image pairs? Because I understand the large language data sets and then being able to generate images, but what is that last piece? Where do we get the data set for that? So we actually use open source data sets. So you have a couple of data sets that all together form about uh, 50, 70 million pairs. If we look at other works, so for example, you mentioned DALI 2 by OpenAI or Imogen by Google, they use internal data sets. Part of the idea is that we use also open source data sets so it will be reproducible. And you know, the progress here has been startlingly fast or it feels that way in the last you know, year or two. It feels like this capability just emerged. How, like, where are we and, and where are we going? I mean. These systems both produce really interesting results, but you have to be careful of cherry picked examples. There's also ways to give them get really bad results, um, you know, on things that, you know, where are we going to be in a year and two years and five years? What do you think the rate of progress is going to look like? Yeah, so it is actually kind of funny. So when we published Make a Scene, we were a state of the art, you know, producing amazing images. Uh, we had that uh, laughing purple porcupine, which was amazing, and realistic cats uh, generated. And then 10 days later, DALI 2 came out from OpenAI, and that was the state of the art. And then a few weeks later, Imagine by Google came out, and that was better than DALI. So really see how everything is really exploding. Um, it feels like, in a way, that text-to-image generation, I don't want to say that it's solved, but we see that it got a really, really high resolution and the text is really starting to work very well. I think the big next things would be probably text to video generation, right? So like everything with images, when you 
start to get very good at images, you go to video. So the same here, and we are starting to see also new models that are able, they don't get very good results like with images, but they're starting to do some text to video generation. Mm. Uh, there are other aspects that we care about a bit more. Um, so we look at it in the as part of the multi-gen project within Fair Excel, which is where we develop make a scene. So we have creativity in mind. So the idea is that we want to, you know, empower people to gain creativity from AI. And this control, for example, is one example of this, but we want to maybe take it a step further. So what we see one of the limitations in today's text to image models is that you don't really have consistency when you want to generate another image. So let's say for example, I'm an author and I, want, I wrote a story and I want to illustrate a story using this model. So every time yeah. I generate an image, it won't be really consistent, right? If I have some kind of character. So one thing is consistency, right? You want to be able to preserve some consistency between generation. Another thing could be personalization. So let's say I want to generate an image and I want my dog to be there. So I want some kind of personalized object there. Uh, so these are like two aspects that weren't addressed until now. What about doing creativity and generation in 3D? Because you talked about going into video, you talked about consistency, but what about sort of being able to, you know, use a language model to generate my 3D world? Yeah, so actually we started working uh, with the people working on uh, Build-A-Bot. Basically, you have that step on the way where you generate from text, you generate an image, and then you, there are a few steps, and one of them turns it into 3D, and you could take this part and put it basically you put it there where you generate the image and take it to, uh, to the next step. Another option would be doing something that is you know, geared towards 3D. That's uh, definitely an option. I'm sure we're gonna start seeing some uh, works about that. There were already uh, a few like text to 3D methods that were published, but they were more of how can we add a color or kind of color the pattern of a shape in a 3D that already exists. And you said, you know, so so Mixing came out in March, then there was Dolly 2, um, and then there's ImageGen from Google. You know, how quickly can we incorporate the sort of the lessons in those models and, and build something even better? What what do you think the next steps is, or, or next steps are over the next six months? Yeah, so, so quite quickly, and we're actually working on it right now. So in terms of approaches, uh, when you want to do text to image generation, there are two ways to do it, right? You can bring the language understanding to image generation, or you can do it the other way around. And what we did right now is we brought image generation into language understanding, actually language generation. But what we see in DALI and DALI 2 and in Imogen that they do it the other way around. They take kind of text understanding and they use uh, very good models, diffusion models to generate. So we're also checking uh, that part. And actually we want to introduce the part of make a scene, which is has control uh, into these kind of models. So there you can kind of uh, generate new, new methods. You can have new methods there. Um, there's also another aspect of make a scene that I didn't uh, talk about before. So we have the control aspect, which is very important because you know, it gives you a feeling of ownership over what you generate because you had some image in your mind and you want to generate that, not something which is kind of random. But there is another aspect of make a scene, which is um, we want to kind of cancel the dissonance between the way humans um, look at images and how these models are trained. So mm -hmm. if I'm looking at, at an image, I look first at a face and then maybe at an animal and then at a vehicle. And when the model is trained, it doesn't know that it needs to have more emphasis on faces, for example, than a patch of sky or on a cat than mm. a patch of grass. And we added mm. that emphasis into make a scene. And that's something we can add as well on top of the control when we move forward with better new models. Jordan, I uh, saw this video on YouTube uh, that is an illustrated story. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this and, and how you did it? Yeah, sure. So part of in the kind of first iterations of Make a Scene, 
uh, I thought that, well, I tell my kids stories and I kind of sometimes make them up and sometimes think about it a bit more, but I don't really know how to draw. So I wanted to see if we can use this to illustrate a story. Uh, so I wrote, wrote a children's story and I used Make a Seed to illustrate it. Uh, it's called The Little Red Boat. So that was kind of a simple kind of story. And later on, I'll, I did it for another, a bit more complicated story. But yeah, that's the idea, like to show the applicability of Make a Scene. So every one of these images in this, this um, video with the narration uh, was generated uh, automatically by Make a Scene. You didn't hand draw any of these? No. So these are, I, I drew the sketch like that I, want, I had in mind and the text, and it was generated by the model. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what uh, people do with this. Um, and I'm very excited about a sort of an AI uh, assisted future for um, humans. We, we talked earlier um, today, I recorded an episode about sort of doing this for code generation and code analysis. So I think there's a lot of opportunities to sort of have people in control, uh, but have, you know, power tools in the form of AI and ML to help them be more effective, efficient and capable.